Welcome everyone to Engaging Students Through Zoom. We are delighted to have you here. Today's workshop has come at the request of a few faculty members who have been with us in other workshops and in a number of our consultations. who are hoping for more support now that we've been through a few weeks of online teaching and are thinking about ways to more effectively engage students in lectures and the various uh, types of teaching that we do in this semester. So I'd like to start by introducing our facilitators. Uh, myself, my name is Beth Luoma. I am Assistant Director of Faculty Teaching Initiatives at the Poor Center for Teaching and Learning. And I am joined here today by Brian, who I will let introduce now. Oh. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Pause. I'm an Assistant Director for the Educational Technology and Media team. I'm also at the Poor Center for Teaching and Learning. But before we dig into the great menu of options we have available for you today, I want to take a moment to pause and reflect on why engage students on Zoom in the first place. So I'd like you to, to, for a moment to consider that each Zoom class or recording, depending on the format they're using, is essentially one long educational video. And so multiple, multiple studies have shown that video specifically can be a highly effective educational tool. And the list of references here are not my own. They are collated by Cynthia Brown, who has listed uh, her reference at the bottom. A great piece I'll be sharing out at the end of this session. And that while we know video can be a highly effective educational tool, we know that it's not inherently effective. And the analogy I'd like to draw here too is that you may have, for instance, a very well manufactured hammer that you'd be using to nail, uh, you know, to, to nail something into a piece of wood. Um, but if you take that hammer and just chuck it at the wall, <laughs> it's not going to be as effective as having a planned approach with structure in which you decide to hold that nail to the wall and hammer it in. And I'd say the same goes for a lot of our pedagogical tools. Tools in and of themselves are not inherently effective, but if we think about them with intention and plan out how we're gonna use them, they can be incredibly effective. So one thing we know from the research is that attention to educational video tends to drop to about 50% after about nine to 12 minutes. So this has huge implications for our classes. So if you think about the traditional Yale class that may be 50 minutes or an hour, 15 minutes, very quickly we can lose our students' attention and engagement. So how do we combat that? How can we ensure that our Zoom classes and this, this new format that we're functioning in right now are effective? And so again, coming from Cynthia Obama's framework, we want to think about ways that we can maximize student learning. And in our collection here, she provides three lenses. One is active learning. So that's in your Zoom lecture or class meeting, however you want to describe it, provide opportunities for your students to engage in some way, whether that's through questions or activities. A second thing to consider is cognitive load. You know, our, our human brains have limits. There's only so much that we can keep in our working memory and so much that we can commit to long-term memory as we think beyond the class. So how can you make sure that within your course it's well-structured, that it's clear, and that the learning material is presented in chunks that are more digestible? And lastly, she asks us to consider student engagement. So how can you think about the content that's in your course and how it can be made relevant to students? How can you highlight connections? So as we think about these Zoom strategies, as we're thinking about the breakout rooms and the polls and the things that you've asked us to describe today, I hope you'll consider this larger perspective in making your course as effective as possible. And so a major takeaway that we have been trying to share throughout academic continuity is that as you're considering transitioning your lab course online to remind yourself of your intended learning goals for your students. So when you think holistically about your course or about an individual session, what knowledge do you hope the students will attain? What skills will the students learn? What viewpoints will the students adopt? And so ideally, you are able to prioritize approaches, including the Zoom tools that you're using, that will help your students achieve the learning you intend. So if you want them to um, you know, be able to arrive at the correct answer to a math problem, are you able to use poll that, a poll that you present that question, have people answer it, and you know, really address any misconceptions for the wrong answers? You know, are there ways you can scaffold that in as you're thinking about the Zoom tool, tool that you select? There's also the logistics of it as you think about being an instructor. So as you're selecting your strategy, you can think about, is it a spontaneous or planned activity? Do you wanna be able to do it on the fly as you respond to where your students are? Or do you want it really well crafted beforehand before you launch it? There are also some considerations we talked about along the way for a small versus a large class. This is a fairly large webinar, so it can be difficult to stay on top of the chat while you're also trying to teach the class. So you might wanna think about, could you employ a TF if you're using chat? You can also consider ease of use. So chat is something that's already built in versus instructor preparation. If you're thinking about assigning breakout rooms ahead of time that would require a little bit of planning and going in the back end to set up those options. So thinking about that. 
and also always considering what's accessible to all of your students. Uh, you may have students with specific learning needs. You may have students who need specific accommodations. So you want to make sure you keep them in mind as you as you select these strategies. And as you go through this whole thought process, again, consider are there opportunities for active learning where you can provide opportunities for your students to engage in questions and activities. To consider cognitive load, a way in which a session is really structured. I'll point to today's session too. We tried to start with our objectives and end with our objectives to hone you back in. Um, and to think about student engagement. How can you demonstrate some relevance to what's going on in their lives?